You know, I've been all around the world, but I love New England best. I might be prejudiced, but it's true, I love New England best. I've already been to Paris, already been to Rome. And what did I do but miss my home? Oh, I have been out west to California. How's this? As always. Okay, ready? Yes. Hey, everybody. Um, so, here's the next week of um, the Providence on Voyage series. and. And this week we, we are in um, Narragansett, Rhode Island, Scarborough Beach specifically, where I spent many summers growing up. It's one of my favorite places in the world. It's very much the, the way I remember it. I was there just last summer. It's still a great place. It's a fun place to hang out. Narragansett is, is great at night. The water is cold and clean as ever, full of striper and black sea bass and fluke and everything else, and of course, lobster. So that's what we've chosen to cook today because when I was a kid growing up there, at least once, maybe twice, we would go to um, Galilee, which is very near Narragansett, and pick up lobsters. And as a matter of fact, if you look on our Instagram page, that photo of myself when I was about 12 years old with my auntie Joanne, we went to um, a little lobster hut in, in Galilee, and we told the guy, we want the biggest lobster you have, and he was like, well, the biggest lobster I have, somebody already bought. And my auntie Joanne is not the type of woman to take no for an answer. She said, look, I'm here with cash, I'm taking the biggest lobster that you got. So that's why we walked out with that eight and three quarter pound or nine pound lobster. But anyway, so here we are. These are the lobsters that we've um, that we prepared for you guys today. And these lobsters are stuffed with um, Jonah crab and um, all of the meat from the knuckle and the legs of the lobster. And the legs of the lobster, you can roll them out with a uh, rolling pin. My grandfather taught me to do that when I was a little kid. And he used to call them dead men's fingers. Um, but there is quite a bit of meat in there. So this stuffing is made with rich crackers and leek and mushroom and onion and um, lobster meat and peaky toe crab meat or Jonah crab meat. So it's already been buttered. I suggest you set your oven to 400 degrees and then pop it in the oven until the stuffing or the head right here is golden brown. So here we go, we're gonna do that now. And if you like, when you pop this in the oven, you can also part, uh, pop these beautiful Parker House rolls in the oven for 400 degrees. These will only take about four or five minutes to be ready for the table, just to get them hot all the way through and delicious once again. And I suggest also that you wrap your sheet pan with uh, aluminum foil so you don't have to wash it afterwards, all right? We'll just pop this in the oven and then we'll proceed with the rest of the meal. I'm not gonna tell you how long that's gonna take. And the reason why is because I'm not at your house with your oven and I don't know how efficient your oven is. This oven will probably take six, seven, maybe eight minutes to get that golden brown and delicious, but your oven is probably a little slower. So it could take 10 minutes, could take 11 minutes, could take 12 minutes, who knows? But anyway, look for golden brown and delicious on the stuffing. Holy moly, it is golden brown. So now we can move on to the first course, which is a chilled heirloom tomato soup, which also has um, melon in it. So it's, it's like probably 60% tomato and 40% melon. And then we also have here as garnish, um, heirloom tomatoes, heirloom melons, and then these little white guys right here are the scallop dumplings. And what that is actually is a mousseline of um, scallop. So it's scallop meat with a little bit of cream and egg white, and then we steam it in the oven, and they have this beautiful texture, this light, fluffy texture, and obviously a flavor that's just, you know, bursts with um, scallop flavor. A little bit of melon, which we compressed a little bit, and of course, like, in Narragansett, we didn't have a uh, CV machine when I was a kid growing up, nobody did. Um, but this is a, you know, a course that is like in keeping with the way we ate when we were there, which is we would go to the local farm stands, we would go to the fish market or down to Galilee and buy some lobsters and just create a meal with whatever was, uh, whatever was available in the market at the time. So here's the soup itself. If you wanna bring it to the table and make it look pretty, maybe put it in a pitcher. You can arrange all of the fruits and the scallop in the dish and then I would just pour the tomato soup at the table, just like that. So there's that. And then we also gave you a little bit of um, basil cream, which is literally just uh, basil leaves that have been blanched in salted water and then mixed with just fresh cream. And you're gonna drizzle a little bit of that around the bowl as well. And then we'll finish with just a touch of olive oil. And there you go, that's your soup. So eat this ice cold, like 
straight out of the refrigerator. Don't let it warm up at all. The colder it is, the more refreshing it'll be. That's it, first course, enjoy. Mm. See, that's the benefit of not wearing a mask. You can actually taste it. So again, in keeping with the way we would have eaten uh, when we were spending our summer in Narragansett or on Scarborough Beach, we've made, there's your bread by the way, bread service. Um, we kept the garnish really simple. So just steamed potatoes with beans, herbs, green beans, almondine, a little bit of shallot. And there's a little bit of an herb butter that's emulsified, um, which is in there as well. So if you like, you can just take this thing, pop it in your microwave for like 30 seconds, maybe 45 seconds, until everything's hot and then you're ready. Okay. Yeah. All right, so there's the lobster, golden brown, nice and crispy. And then the one thing you wanna do, we talked about these last week, these little fish testers. So since this, stu lo this stuffing there in the head, you want it to be warmed all the way through. Everything's cooked in there, but you don't want to eat it cold, right? So just put the fish tester in there and then touch it, touch it to your wrist or touch it to your lower lip. And if it's warm to the touch, then the lobster's ready. So that one's warm to the touch. See, in our oven, it only took like maybe six minutes for this thing to get hot. But in your oven, it may take a little bit longer. Um, so these, all of the lobsters that we are serving this week, these are all female lobsters. So why did we get female lobsters? Well, there's two reasons. Number one is that female lobsters have more meat in their tail. Female lobsters have wider um, tails than male lobsters. So that's one reason. The second reason is right here. This lovely pink hue that this sauce has is due to the eggs of the female lobster. So um, when, the, when you crack open a female lobster, you know, the eggs are completely green. But if you mix that with um, one part of those eggs and four parts butter, and then emulsify that into lobster stock, you get this incredible creamy, rich sauce that has a flavor that's just, you know, rich, rich, rich lobster flavor. And so that's what we've done here. So this I suggest you just heat it up. This you can pop in the microwave along with the vegetables just for um, 30 seconds or 45 seconds just to get it hot. And then you can either pour it on the plate with the lobster or if you like, you can serve it alongside. Either way, it's delicious. There are little potatoes. These beautiful green beans, almondine. This is like right out of 1965, this dinner, but it's delicious. And that's what matters. So here's that beautiful sauce. So if you decide to put some sauce on the lobster, you might drizzle a little bit in the tail like this. And then you might put a little bit over the vegetables. And maybe just keep the rest at the table because you're gonna wanna, well, frankly, you're gonna wanna bathe in it, but we didn't give you enough for that, but <laughs> keep it around so you can, you can dip the, the, the meat from the lobster and the tail or the claw and all the stuffing and everything in the lobster uh, sauce. It's just delicious, so keep it handy at the table. So there's the main course and the bread. And then for dessert, Mac made a beautiful blackberry and peach cobbler. So um, blackberries are from Murray Farms. The peaches are from Andy's Orchard, so really the best fruit in the world. Which, of course, in New England, they have incredible stone fruit too and incredible berries. Well, as a matter of fact, in, on Scarborough Beach, there were wild blackberries growing everywhere. And that's one of the reasons why I wanted to put it in the cobbler this week. Um, not to mention the fact that they're also at the peak of their season here in California. So, beautiful cobbler, which you can warm up, if you like, in the oven for probably five minutes, three to five minutes. And then we have this beautiful um, whipped cream with um, Tahitian vanilla, which I suggest you put right on top, and then just eat a little spoonful of that every time you have a spoonful of the cobbler, and it's absolutely delicious. And then, to finish the meal, and again, I think like in keeping with New England tradition, like we have a beautiful vanilla shortbread that's dipped in dark chocolate, and then Mac kind of replicated an after eight or an Andy's mint. So this is dark chocolate, and in the center, mint, so when I was a kid and going to all these restaurants uh, in, in Rhode Island, like I always remember at the end of the meal, you'd either get Andy's mints or an after eight with the check. And so that's why we wanted to prepare these for you guys this week. So once again, that's, that's the meal, that's dinner. I hope you enjoy it. We hope you join us next week. We hope you'll join us when we are able to open once again. Wear a mask. I know I'm not wearing one right now, but it's only for the video. Um, and I want to say also, R.I.P. John Lewis, a true American hero. Um, he's definitely going to be missed. Anyway, thank you very much. 
We'll see you next week. And that's a wrap. <laughs> I can't help it, dum de dum de dum de dum de dum day. Oh, New England, dum de dum de dum dum de dum day. Oh, New England, ride a wild man. I have seen old Israel's arid plain. It's magnificent, but so's Maine.